So let's look at a two-tailed test. A coin is flipped 15 times to see if it is biased. The result is 12 heads and three tails. Test at the 10% significance level whether or not there is evidence the coin is biased. OK, so um, first of all, we're going to set up what P is. So let P be the probability of getting, well, seeing as we're just trying to determine to see if the coin is biased, really we could choose to either look at heads or tails here. I'm going to look at heads. Um, you can do it from the similar point of view of tails and you should get the same answer. So let P be the probability of getting heads. Okay, so H0, the null hypothesis, would say that the coin is fair at 0.5. And our alternative hypothesis, because we're looking at a two-tailed test here, we want to determine whether there is evidence or not whether the coin is biased. Not saying whether we're particularly looking at whether heads or tails is more favourable, we would say that the property is just 0.5, uh, not 0.5, for example. Okay, So, assume that H0 is true. Set up a binomial distribution. So in this case, we're looking at a binomial distribution with uh, 15 flips of the coin, Okay, and the probability of 0.5. Okay, so... Because we're looking at it from the point of view of heads, okay, now here we got 12 heads out of 15, okay, so 12 heads out of 15. Now 12 over 15 is greater than 0 0.5, okay, so what we're looking at is to the left, oh sorry, from, from your point of view, to the right of the uh, expected value, okay? Now the expected value, e of x, is 15 times 0 0.5, so 7.5, okay? So the expected value is 7.5, we actually got 12 heads, and so we want to look at the probability of x being greater than or equal to 12, not less than or equal to 12. What you've got to try and imagine is if you think about the distribution itself, it would look something like this. Okay. Now, the highest values that you would get would be around this 7.5 range, and 12 is to the right of it, okay, of your expected values. I mean, this isn't particularly good because it'll be, it'll be two bars. Um, but the point is that if you look at greater than or equal to 12, this is going to be more likely to be your significance level rather than less than or equal to 12, which would be all of that. OK, so you look in the direction of the side that the number is on of the expected value. I haven't explained that particularly well. Um, if we were looking at, let's say, um, three heads, three is to the left of 7.5, so I would use less than or equal to three at this point. Because 12 is to the right of the expected value, we use greater than or equal to 12. Okay. That's kind of the layman terms of it, of how this would work. So, greater than or equal to 12 is 1, take away the probability of x being less than or equal to 11. Okay? So, we get to our tables. So, n is 15, the probability of 0 0.5, and we're looking up 11. Okay? So, that's 0 0.9824. Now that's 0.0176. Uh, okay, now 0.0176, what are we comparing it against? We're not comparing it against 10%. Okay, 
Okay? Because we're looking at a two-tailed test, we need to halve that because we're looking at 5% at one end and 5% the other end. And so we compare this with 5%. Either way, it's still less than 5%. And so, because it's less than 5%, that would mean that we have to reject H0. And so there is evidence to suggest that the coin is biased. Okay, so ultimately what we're saying here is that we have this distribution. Let me uh, do another version of it. So we have this distribution and what we're saying is that 5% from either end, if uh, the value that we get, so in this case 12, is either within this region or within that region, we would say that we would have evidence to suggest the coin is biased. Okay, So that's how this conclusion comes about. The real trick here is determining whether this should be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Okay, And that all comes down to comparing the actual number that we've seen against the expected value E of x. Okay. So this is the uh, short method that we were looking at in the first few videos. In the next video, I will show you how to do a two-tail test with a critical region approach.